So I am Dr. Badri Prasad, working as St. Thomas at College of Agriculture, Gangavati. Working place, my district is Kapal district. So as you are all aware of, so the honeybees are most active and highly evolved insects among the biodiversity. So probably you might be aware of the thing that insect biodiversity is so vast that it contains minimum 5 to 6 million insects. So among all the insects, so we are able to name approximately around 1 million insects, still many more insects, around 4 to 5 million insects are unknown to human being. So with all this big round, so we have very few social insects which are highly evolved like honeybees. So we have in a similar kind ants. So in that respect, but when it comes to the productive insects, that means the insects which are giving me giving us so many products like honey silk and other things so we have three major insects like honeybees silkworms and lac insects among all honeybees are the major insects which use us so many products but if i ask what are the different uh, benefits we are deriving from bees so everyone sees only it is honey but irrespective apart from honey we are going to issue so many other products which I am going to explain in few minutes. So for the academic interest, we have the taxonomic position of the bees. You might be aware of the things, what are the taxi, taxonomic classification of the bees. So it belongs to the phylum Arthropoda under the class Insecta. So the major order it comes is Hymenoptera and with the family APD. So we are all aware of the thing that if you want to call an insect as an insect, it has to possess few certain characters like the body should be segregated or segmented into head, thorax and abdomen. So it has also has two pairs of wings with three pairs of legs. So, but as I already told, it is highly specialized insect so that it can, it has the additional features like it has got pollen basket in the hind leg, it has antenna cleaner in the foreleg, so many adaptations and modifications it has carrying. So, in nature, we mainly find five types of bees in our locality, but all around the world, we have a road. 20,000 major species of bees. So approximately, even though we find 20,000 species of bees, only very few, like eight to 10 species are giving honey. Rest all, they are belong to class bees, that's all. So apart from, we, uh, apart from providing bees, the bees plays a major role in, in crop pollination. But as an economic part, we consider the bees which yield honey as an economical product. So the those which are providing us honey, they are classified under five major species which we find in India. So India, the major advantage of India is it has very rich biodiversity. So what are the resources? The natural resources availability is very huge. So because of that, wherever you go, you find all these five species, namely rock bees, Indian bee, little bee, stingless bee, and the one which we have exotic bees, that is Apis mellifera, which we have imported from European countries. Every nook and corner of our country, we can find all these species. So India is only country where we can find all these species of bees. Rest all countries, if you visit, one or two species will be missing throughout. So let me go one by one. So this is the major bee species and for this bee only we are very much terrified to wear or cultivate bees. So this is rock bee. So you might be aware or you might have seen the ferociousness of these bees. Either you have read in the newspapers or you might have seen in TVs or news. So this is a highly ferocious bee species. If it stings, very rare opportunity a man can survive. So that's why everyone wants honey, but no one wants to cultivate these bees. 
usually these rock bees construct only a single comb and the population will be around 60,000 to 1 lakh bees in a single comb. Even, we, even though we find 1 lakh bees or the worker bees, we find only one queen. That is only one fertile queen we find in the entire colony. So even though there are 1 lakh insects in the single comb, only one fertile queen will be there and there are only activities over position. So these bees construct their hives very high, either on the water tanks or on the topmost branches of the trees. So from a single colony, you can harvest around 25 to 40 kgs, up to 45 kgs of honey you can harvest in a single harvest. So that is the advantage of this bees. But because they go for collection of forage in the wild plants, the taste of honey is very less. So that's why it is not fetching more fries. But major export from our country is this honey. So about 90% of the honey what we are exporting. So it is from rock bees. So you can find these bee colonies around 250 to 300 up to 350 colonies in a, on a single tree. Even in the rock caves, you can find the comb constructions around 200 to 400, 500, up to 300, 350 colonies we can find in our state. So this is the one colony. And very surprisingly, the bees belonging to a particular colony will come back to the same colony after forage. Forage means after feeding. So the bees move out for collection of pollen and nectar. Once they collect the pollen and nectar, they will come back to the same colony without any confusion. So many of us will get confused to identify our own house if it is in a single sequence. So to identify a colony, so what are all the group members or the colony members or the hive members? So we find three groups of or three castes of bees in a single colony. So the one which is very large in size and uh, having its wings which covers only a half of its abdomen is a queen bee. So it, you can see in this picture it is very long, the length is very strong and it is about one and a half times bigger than other two species that is the drone and workers. So in the right picture you, you can observe the drone which is having a tuft of abdomen that is truncated abdomen you can call or the u-shaped abdomen but in a worker bee it is sharp abdomen the end of the abdomen is very sh sharp and the usually the drone bees are very black in color whereas the worker bee is having coloration that is the yellow and black patches either yellow or white patches on their abdomen so that is the characteristic of these bees so that you can easily have identify. Both queen and worker bees are female except the queen is completely are well developed but worker bees are even though they are developed their genital organs are not developed. So that is the major difference and in worker bees the ovipositor is modified into sting. So it stings. So whenever you refer so honey bees will never bite it stings. You should remember. So this is the discrimination between the different castes that are present in a honeybee colony. So the second type of bees are the little bees or we call it as dwarf bees. So highly sweet the honey obtained from this species is highly sweet which is having higher level of sweet and it's most effective pollinator. So we can call it as most effective pollinators because it moves around only half a kilometer of its distance. It constructs its nest wherever our crop plants are there so that it gives very efficient pollination. Rock bees usually travel around three to four kilometers whereas these dwarf bees, they travel within 0.5 kilometer range. So whatever the crop they come across, they will efficiently pollinate. So that it's a highly efficient pollinator. 
and very good honey yield. But the quantity of honey what we are going to get or what we are going to harvest is around 1 to 1.25 kgs in a single harvest. So whereas in rock bees we absorbed up to 40 to 45 kgs, but in dwarf bees we are going to harvest around 1 to 1.5 kgs of honey. So but the taste is good and very efficient pollinator. But both the rock bees and this dwarf bees cannot be domesticated. These two are wild species we cannot rear. You might have seen these little bees in the bushes. So they construct their single nest in bushes but both rock bees and the dwarf bees cannot be domesticated. Only thing we can harvest honey and leave them wild. So very important species for domestication and harvesting of honey and uh, which is very suitable for scientific beekeeping is Indian bees. So in every nook and corner of our country, you, you find these Indian bees. So they are the local bees. So very much acclimatized to our condition. So these Indian bees, they construct. So com when compared to rock bees and little bees, you find single comb in uh, rock bees and uh, little bees, whereas here you find parallel combs, seven to eight combs in a colony we can find. So these will be in, to, in total, we can find around 10 to 15, up to 20,000 bees in a single colony we can observe, well-developed colonies, we can observe up to 20,000 bees. So in a colony, we find only one queen, as I already told, and we find around 40 to 40, 50 or up to 150 drones, that is male bees we can find in a colony and around rest all, it is worker bees. So worker bees are the major strength to the colony. So they, these little Indian bees, they construct in any cracks and crevices of uh, any wood or inside any electrical boxes or inside any, if there is any cavity inside the hole wall. So such hiding places are most preferred for their nest construction. So if you keenly observe any bees moving around any cracks and crevices or a small hole, you can easily identify them as the host or the nest of these Indian bees. So this is one very interesting bee species what, which we are having. So it is a European bee which we have imported because uh, we wanted high quantity of honey harvest, simultaneously very efficient uh, pollinator, at the same time it should be mild without any ferocious nature. So we have import, we found this European species and we imported this. So the major important importance are the, of this bee species is it yields around 20 to 25 kgs of honey in a year in a single harvest. Apart from it is a very efficient uh, pollinator of our crop. At the same time, these are very wide, mild. When compared to rock bees, they are very ferocious and high yielding. But these bees high yielding with mild nature. So we prefer this species and we have imported during 1960s and they have very much acclimatized to our condition and they become Indian bees only. Now we are harvesting in, if you visit any North Indian places, we find these species of bees, which are very high yielding and tons of honey, what we are extracting and exporting today, it is from rock bees as well as the European bees. So here you can find among the group, you can easily identify the queen in the middle. So in the, if you observe the queen, surrounding the queen, you find 12 guard bees. So wherever the queen moves, these guard bees, whatever you are looking at surrounding the queen, they are the guard bees. Always these guard bees surround the queen and protect her. So this is the type, even our royals, like our kings or the prime minister or chief minister, wherever they go, they are surrounded by the, our black cobras. Like that, even honey bees, they have the jet plus security, the queen of honey bee. She has also got jet plus security wherever she moves, she is surrounded, always surrounded by well guard bees. So this is the one 
very interesting bee. This is the stingless bees we can call. They are the trigono edipennis. So very small bees like our housefly. The size is less than a housefly, but it is it providing very highly medicinal. The honey which is obtained from this trigono species is highly medicinal value. So the honey, the one liter of honey of uh, stingless bees costing around three to five thousand per liter or per kg. Whereas that rock bees, the cost of honey is around 100 to 150 or 200 rupees we are getting. The price of our Indian bees per kg varies somewhere between 500 to 700 rupees. Whereas this uh, stingless bees, it varies from 3 to 5,000 because of its high medicinal properties. So why so? Because it is because of the size of these bees, they can enter very minute flowers and they can obtain the pollen and the nectar from those flowers. So because of that, many of our herbs which comes in Ayurveda are the medicine, the herbs which are having the medicinal properties, they have very minute flowers. So for pollinating such flowers, these bees are very important. They visit such minute flowers and collect the pollen and nectar from those flowers. So by harvesting, while harvesting those, and by consuming those pollen and nectar, they provide the honey which is provided by or secreted by these bees are highly medicinal properties. That's why the cost of the honey is also very high. So if you observe, they construct the hive inside any wall if they're having some holes or like that. So even artificial uh, nest we can prepare and uh, we can rear these bees. So whatever sorghum grain like structure, what we are saying in the upper one, they are the brood cell. Brood cell means their larva or the eggs or the larva and pupa, they will reside in those upper layer. And in the bottom layer, you are finding the honey pots. So they are filled with honey. So both brood chamber as well as the honey chamber are separate. Even in other bee species also, we, they will never mix honey with broods brood means egg larva and pupa are the immature stages so they are kept apart so here also the same trend the brood chamber is separate and the honey chamber is separate so here also the cast you, you can easily discriminate queen is always very big in size and uh, the workers are very sharp and uh, drones are having dark color with a blunt abdomen so as I already told, the complete body is possessed with or provided with innumerable number of hairs. So in the right picture, in the, it is a hind leg of the honeybee, where in which we find an extra modification to collect the pollen. So whenever they visit, so they can collect the pollen and they place it in pollen basket or you can call it as carbicula. So it is a complete uh, metamorphosis as you are all aware. The egg, larva, pupa and adult we find. So usually the egg is laid at the bottom of the cell. So probably you might have arrived or you might have seen the womb of honeybee. So at the bottom individual hexagonal cells you usually find. At the bottom of the cell, the egg is laid. It is a, it's just like a small silvery line, it appears. So as it grows and it hatches, the larva you can find, it is an apodous larva, which is in, submerged in the, inside the comb. And later it develops into pupa, the exerate pupa. Later the adult comes out. So usually it is a 21 days cycle. So it is a general structure of a little bee comb. So here you observe whatever the comb or the cells which are which is above the stick. So it is honey crest we call. So only honey is stored, pure honey is stored above the above this crest. So otherwise, the bottom of this uh, branch, whatever the construction is there, it is a complete brood and in this brood also you can easily identify in the top portion only the worker cells have been placed so next it is the next to the worker brood it is the drone cells 
at the bottom we find queen cell whenever it is required only queen cells are formed otherwise only the drone cells and the worker broods we find so this is the brood area so usually in the villagers they don't know what is brood and what is the honey chamber they pluck entire comb and macerate are the they just squeeze the entire comb so along with honey we, they also harvest the larva and egg which are squeezed so whatever the honey we consume raw honey whatever we consume it contains all egg larva whatever their secretions everything we are going to get as a pure honey but scientifically it is not pure only we have to harvest the honey crest which is present at the top region leaving aside the bottom brood area but villagers don't know are in the fear of the attack of bees they harvest the entire comb and they squeeze the entire comb as such without removing the brood area so that it is very contaminated honey with egg and larva everything so at the bottom of the comb if you observe we find a peanut shaped cells they are the queen cells so clearly we can differentiate between a worker cell or a drone cell or a queen cell so an apiarist or a beekeeper should be aware of the thing which is a brood cell wherever the drones are developing so if the drone cells are more it is an indication that colony is ready for separation so it is they are the techniques by rearing the bees otherwise for our general information both work does worker bee cells drone cells and queen cells are reared separately in a brood chamber so majority of our field crops are dependent on honey bee pollination so in nature we find about 95% of our plants are angiosperms angiosperms majority of the angiosperms are cross pollinated as you are being a science student you are all aware so many of our crops in our locality whatever the field crops or horticulture crops or the vegetable crops whichever the crops we are only 5% of the crops are self pollinated rest all cross pollinated so you can imagine the fate of a farmer if, if there is no bees on earth why bees are so specific are so important so that is the major question in front of us so why so yes i already told there are 4 to 5 million insects are there on this earth among all why bees are only important why not other pollinators so even though there are several innumerable number of pollinators like butterflies wasps bees ants birds human beings wind several of these act as a barrier or the catalyst for pollination they carry the pollen and transfer to the stigma of the female flower so as a trained student you are all aware that what is pollination pollination is nothing but transfer of pollen grains from pollen to stigma of the female flower in all other life beings like animals or the human beings or the birds male and female have the capacity to move that is they have the capacity to move from one place to another place so that they can easily find their mates or the partners so that they unite together and the generation starts but in case of plants they don't have the capacity to move from one place to another so that the male flower the pollen from the male flower cannot transmit to the female flower so they require some agent for pollination that means for transferring the pollen from one male flower to the stigma of the female flower so this activity is done by several agents like bees butterflies wasps ants human beings water rest so many other agents are also there in nature but among all bees are placed number one it is just because millions of hairs are present on the bee body is the first ad admission so that is the first important characteristic is the presence of millions of hairs on the insect body that is bee body so which attracts the pollen grains and carry them on their body and transfer from one flower to another that is the first important the second thing is whatever the insects you observe like butterflies wasps and ants they are diurnal in nature see diurnal means 
they are active only after the sunrise so from 8 am onwards whenever the sun rises they start their activity you can find but in nature the flower opens around 4 30 am in the morning 4 30 to 5 am in the morning whenever the flower opens the receptivity of the stigma is very high so during that period suppose if the pollination takes place easily the stigma attracts that is the the female flower they can easily attract the pollen grains and the jagot will be formed easily but if as the time advances the stigma dries up and uh, the receptivity of the female flower reduces the quality of the pollination reduces so that we get lower yields but our insects are the agents of all pollination are active only after 8 am but our flower opens at 4 30 am so these honeybees have the capacity to see under uv radiation which comes soon after the sunrise that means even before the sunrise the sun emits uv radiation and bees have the capacity to visualize or see in that uv radiation rest of the insect lack this facility so that the bees are active at 4 30 or 5 am itself so they move to the field and start their work so once they start their job of collection of the pollen collection of the nectar the pollination goes on takes place that's why effective pollination takes place at the right time and the quantity of the pollination will be very effective that is the major advantage of this bee pollination if the there are few species of bees like rock bees which are active even during the night hours if the moon exists so during moon days the rock bees are active 24 bar 7 so though throughout the night the pollination activity will take place as soon as the flower opens immediately the rock bees visit such flowers and pollinate them so that the rate of pollination is much more with bees compared to any other insects so these are the major advantages of bee pollination for instance or for example for pollinating 10 gunta of tomato field we require 40 to 50 thousand rupees for just for pollination so for pollinating 10 gunta or quarter acre of land minimum of 15 labors have to work for 21 days to complete the pollination see for just 10 gunta we are spending around 40 to 50 thousand as per the existing labor charges you just imagine each and every plant on this earth has to be pollinated either it is a crop plant or a fruit plant or a weed plant it has to be pollinated so then how much cost it incurs for pollination if the peas are not there on this earth what would have happened so onion mango cauliflower goa so whatever the food crops we are eating all the flowers all the fruit crops all the field crops they require bee pollinations the number of colonies required per hectare also be scientifically calculated and the how much yield it is going to enhance also calculated minimum of from 10 to 15 percent it goes up to 100 percent yield increase we have noticed in several crops so that's why in each crop plant if we supplement pollination along with our bee colonies it enhances our pollination for pollination benefits we cannot put some value it is we cannot count how much uh, amount we are going to get because of pollination so that is innumerable health that is going to deliver derive from this bee pollination similarly as i already told only thing that comes to our eyes is honey if we start the apiculture only honey we notice for a farmer it is just the pollination benefit honey is a side by product but any other commercial workers it is honey is the primary product which they are going to harvest so honey as i already told in indian bees it is going to be, we are going to get uh, on an average 8 to 10 kgs per colony per year for instance it is if it is a european bee we are going to harvest 25 to 30 kgs of honey per harvest but apart from honey we are going to derive so many other byproducts 
from apiculture if it is European bees. So very few products that we are going to derive from Indian bees. But if you start rearing European bees, we are going to derive so many other byproducts. Let's see one by one what are the other products that we are going to derive. So the honey is one such natural sweetener which we are having today. So having several antimicrobial properties and even though we are in 21st century, we are not able to prepare any artificial diet which is equivalent to honey, which is easily digestible with all the nutrient supplement which is which it is having. So still we are far behind of the nature. We cannot manage it. So apart from honey, we are going to derive wax, pea wax. That is the second important byproduct that we are going to derive. So as you are all aware, wax is being used in candles, polishes, shoe polish or nail polish or the paste of tax, everything. Cosmetics industries also they are using this wax. So apart from wax, we are getting propolis, pollen, royal jelly, bee venom, so many other. So honey, we are getting in so many packets. So for the general information of the house, if you want purest of pure honey, you have to have apiary in your own, of your own. If you keep at least one box, you will get the pure honey. Whatever the honey you are going, you are bringing from the market, it is all adulterated as per the reports of National Bee Board. So whatever the major brands of honey we are finding in and around our market, it's all artificial honey. So, so many ingredients that we, whatever the components of our major, almost all the major nutrients required for our growth and development is composed in the honey. That's why a newly born baby also easily consumes and you can easily digest the honey. And the one which is for old, that is 80 or 90 or 100 year old, also can easily digest the honey. That's one important character of this honey. And as soon as they consume the honey, immediately it releases the nutrients. So it gives the strength to the body and it helps in so many medicinal benefits also there. So in a rough estimate, you can say one kg of honey is equivalent to five liters of milk or uh, consumption of 50 eggs or consumption of one and a half kg meat. It's a rough estimate based on the nutrient quality of the honey. So apart from the nutrient quality, you can see it, it has got good proteinaceous food. It acts as a blood purifier or the, it increases the hemoglobin content. So, so many, it acts as a carrier for so many medicines. Usually in villages, you might have observed many of the Ayurvedic and homeopathic medicines are fed along with honey. So in preparation of so many bakery products and uh, religious ceremonies, we use honey. So one or the other, we have from birth to death, we have innumerable number of uses of this honey. So apart from honey, we are harvesting bee wax, which is a major byproduct of this apiculture. So as I already told, it is a, used in several cosmetic and pharmaceutical industries making candles. Usually whatever the candles which we are using locally is of paraffin wax, made paraffin wax. But if you prepare candles from pure honey or pure wax, honeybee wax, it has got pleasant aroma and which clears our lung tracts. But if you use this paraffin wax, so they are harmful to our health or the respiration. So several polishes, crayons, ink, carbon paper, several waterproofing or production of foam foundation seed, several uh, industrial users out there. So usually we can find the cost around 800 to 1500 rupees a kg of bee wax. So a very important byproduct of this apiculture. The another one very important uh, byproduct of this uh, apiculture is bee venom. So mainly might have seen, so many of you might have got stings with bees. So it is having highly medicinal value. 
so it relieves rheumatoid arthritis even today we don't have any medicine under allopathy but the one who are well versed with are taking this continuous stings with these bees will never get rheumatoid arthritis even if they get so it will be cured only with bee stings it cannot be cured with any others but apart from this uh, rheumatoid arthritis it also increases our heartbeat or the cardiac conditions or it is very helpful for our lungs so several advantages of uh, bee therapy is there so apart from this bee venom is used for production of many of the narcotics or uh, some some of the medicines are it uh, used in the anti venom preparations so that's why it is highly cost the cost of 1 gram of bee venom usually in the international market costs around 10 to 12000 rupees a gram so highly prized product of this apiculture is bee venom so apart from bee venom we find royal jelly another important product by product of this apiculture so the importance of a royal jelly is in apiculture so i already i already told so the one is the there are three cats in a, a colony one is queen another one is a drone another one is worker bees both queen and worker bees are females so only queen is well developed or completely developed and uh, less developed is worker bees so if you find the dis differentiation why it is so how exactly they are going to discriminate between a queen and a worker bee it is based on the feeding of royal jelly the bees which get royal jelly throughout their life that means from the day one from immediately after the emergence to till their death or till they become adult they will be become queen that is up to 21 days if they continuously feed with royal jelly they will become queen the one which are fed with royal jelly only for the beginning three to four days of uh, their emergence from or hatching from the egg then they will become worker bees so the rest of the day that means after four days they will start feeding only with pollen and nectar or with honey otherwise if they get continuous through the period if they get royal jelly they will become queen so royal jelly is nothing but the secretion from the worker bees heads so there is a pharyngeal gland in the head region of the worker bees it is the royal jelly is nothing but the secretion from the head region so if you observe the life stages or the life span of a worker bee and a queen bee queen bee will survive for 3 to 4 years the life span of a queen bee is 3 to 4 years whereas the life span of a worker bee is around 65 to 90 days up to 90 days so why this difference so the scientists were so surprised to see the benefit and they called this royal jelly as a amruta buloka that is on the earth amruta on earth so that's why they made the small tablets those who are willing to survive for a long years they usually consume or the take for the health benefits and they feel that their age or the lifespan will be enhanced so easily you will get these royal jelly tablets on uh, amazon or flipkart by paying the regular charges and you can enhance your lifespan apart from enhancing the lifespan it is having high vitamin e content royal jelly is rich in vitamin e content vitamin e is responsible for anti-aging properties so usually people believe that believe that so by regularly consuming or if it is used in as a cosmetic it improves our advances our age or any wrinkles on the skin will be cleared up at a, or it gives glamour to the face that's why usually the cosmetic industries are behind this product and it is also very highly priced product usually a liter of royal jelly cars around 55 to 60,000 in the international market so another important byproduct of this apiculture is pollen 
So the forum usually find as a pediatric food or a dietary supplement for uh, athletics. So it is also consumed as a medicine. So it is a direct product from the bees, which easily collect from the pollen flowers and carry it to the hives. Before going into the hives, you usually keep this pollen extractor in the front of the colonies and we collect them and it is priced around five to 6,000 a kg in the market. So once it is collected, it is shared dried and filled in the boxes and you can regularly consume as a dietary supplement. So one of the important product of this another product is propolis. So propolis is nothing but a sap and residue, resin exuded from the bark or leaves of a trees which bees collect. So these propolis acts as a seal for the hives. So wherever the cracks and crevices are there in the hives, easily they will seal with this propolis. So even for construction of nest, this propolis is being, it is very hard product you can imagine. So several preparation of cosmetics and antiseptic creams and lotions, this is used. So the product is available in the market around seven to 8,000 a kg it fetches. So it is another important byproduct. So nowadays you can even we find renting of hives. Another uh, we can observe or the benefit which we can derive is many of the farmers cannot they cannot maintain the bee colonies. So that it is it has become an industry to give bee colonies for rent. Earlier only in North India we used to find this renting of bees. But nowadays, even in our South India or South Southern Karnataka, even in our part also, we, we can observe people provide these bee colonies for rent for pollination purpose. So visually, the pomegranate farmers or the papaya farmers or the production of uh, these uh, cucurbits and uh, guard vegetables, those farmers hide the bee colonies and uh, they get pollination benefit in turn the beekeeper gets rent so that is also a lucrative industry nowadays which is coming up so another industry which is coming up recently is aromatherapy so the bees gives very fine aroma if you sit around the bee colonies they give very pleasant aroma by inhaling those uh, this aroma we can clear off the lung tracts so that the respiration, easy respiration will take place. So that's why you might have observed in many of the metro cities, the oxygen parlors. In a similar kind, the bee parlors are, nowadays it is taking up in the metro cities, where in which a direct connection from the beehive will give to a mask, that is the face mask you, they will be providing, so that you can easily inhale that aroma from the beehives. So it is also fetching a very good remunerative uh, cost nowadays. So if you observe, if you visit Venezuela, where in which if you observe in a commercial street, out of five shops, three shops will only for be aromatherapy. So that is the popularity in that country. So even nowadays, even in our country, such parlors are coming up in a big way. For that, under Atmanirbhar Yojana of our central government, they are providing subsidy schemes so that you can easily establish these aromatherapy centers in our local livelihoods. The another one important uh, benefit which you are going to get, receive from honeybees is epitherapy as I have already told. So it is a good therapy for the rheumatoid arthritis. So there are several experts in and around uh, our region. So who gives very good sting therapy that is the people who are suffering from rheumatoid arthritis, they will get two stings every day on the L3 and L4 bones of our central nerve cord so that the arthritis will be cleared off. So regular taking of bee stings is helpful. That's why there is one fellow that is my Madhikeshwara Hegde near Sirsi who is giving this therapy by charging 400 rupees for two bee stings a day. So that's why so you have the many commercial aspects of this beekeeping so that you can start epitherapy 
or you can start uh, renting the bees or you can sell the by products or for pollination purpose or you can produce honey you can sell raw honey or you can sell processed honey or you can blend with several other compounds like uh, tulsi citronella or uh, several other uh, uh, products and you can sell the blended honey also based on the requirement of the people or the preference of the people or you can value add the honey like you can value add with you can add honey with the dry fruits and you can sell or you can prepare fruit salad or you can uh, prepare so many other dishes out of honey and you can sell so it is also a food industry is also coming up in a big way in our country so that you can have multiple options to start apiculture and get benefit financial benefit from apiculture so for instance so you, you apiculture is such a wonderful industry you can start without a single paisa it is also there for the person who is having crores of rupees so it is an best example the boy which whom you are seeing in this picture is mr shiv from kopal district who is hiving the bee colonies there are two swarming seasons in apical in uh, bees that is whenever the population of bees increases in a colony they divide themselves and go separate so whenever they go they keep searching for a safe place so if they find any cracks and crevices on the trees or tree trunks or any other wooden boxes or the neglected area where they can hide themselves so that they can settle there and start their colony so to attract those swarms this by he collects the matured bottle guard he removes everything the content makes a small hole and he hangs them in the place where the bee swarms easily moves from one place to another he knows wherever in the neglected uh, buildings or the neglected or the dried up wells or on the trees trunks so he hangs those bottle guard in the plants so that the natural swarming easily come and sits there so once they establish there he will collect those and hives them and sells them so usually in a year he collects around 200 to 300 colonies like that and he sells so by selling the colonies easily collects without uh, spending a rupee he easily collects the colonies by selling the colonies he collects around 2000 rupees per colony so it varies from 1500 to 2000 rupees and he earns around 3 to 4 lakhs in a year he is illiterate without spending a rupee he earns 3 to 4 lakh in a year so an illiterate can start apiculture a person without any investment can start apiculture that's the beauty of this apiculture so this usually the bottle guard the matured bottle guard after cutting open it looks like this so it is another technique of collecting the bee swarms usually we find uh, ardran parts in our villages so taking the ardran parts we have to smear the bottom of the ardran parts with the wax and some of the spices so by making a paste of these spices along with the wax if we smear on the bottom and if we hang upside down on the trees or any or such places easily the swarmed bees will find such a location and they get attracted for the smell of the wax and they come and settle so once they settle and establish there you can easily collect them and you can fill them in the bee hives that is the isi boxes and you can sell so usually we get around 1500 to 2000 rupees so that is the beauty of apiculture so if those two are the example for an illiterate and without any investment so here is a person he is in ludhiana so he is the bushan singh gulleria of from ludhiana from punjab so he has invested around 5 crore rupees for a apiculture industry so the boxes which we are seeing here they are the mellifera colonies so it is his factory so by investing around 5 crore rupees so he is having a to z of bees 
that is from he is the manufacturer of uh, beekeeping equipments whatever the requirements for the beekeeping like bee boxes bee stand or the smoker honey harvester foundation sheet everything he produces or the manufactures apart from he also raises the bees and he sells the bees sell the bee products everything a to z of bees by investing 5 crore rupees his annual turnover today is 25 to 30 crores see there is no exaggeration in telling that if you you can easily visit him and you can observe him so he is having a to z of bees he is he moves the bees from punjab to rajasthan every year based on the availability of food he transports them and collects honey so tons of honey he sells tons of by products he sells and apart from this bee keeping equipments so that an illiterate without any investment can also start bee keeping a financier can also start bee keeping industry so that he can earn so this is this is one small glimpse of his uh, center so where he sells around uh, 35 different blends of honey so apart from raw honey he is also sells monofloral multifloral and several blended honey along with several equipments so like this so this is the one industry the picture which we are seeing here is this a queen bee rearing so they are the techniques for the bee keepers suppose if you need quality queens for getting good number of uh, offsprings and collection of good quality or quality of honey you need to rear young queens you may require young queens so simultaneously you can rear 32 64 or 256 based on multiples of 32 you can rear the bees only queen bees you can rear and sell them it is a big industry in northern india where they sell each queen bee at a cost of 250 rupees so that they are minting lakhs of rupees just by selling the queen bees so in south karnataka our indian bees we are standardizing the procedure here also the farmer may come up and start queen rearing experiments or queen rearing exercises and they also can sell their queens for the benefit of the other farmers and they can quality of queen rearing is also one project where in which central government gives up to 20 lakhs subsidy for production of this queens quality queen rearing so they they can get subsidy for this also and they can start on industry so these are all the mellifera or european queen rearing cages so last year uh, we have gone to ludhiana along with our 10 bee keepers and we have studied this and we are implementing this industries so this is what uh, the magira mansan is the you can google out and you can find his shop and his activities so this is the frame of uh, mellifera so our you uh, indian bees are very small combs here it is very big one so each comb you can find around 2000 around 2000 uh, bees you can find in a single comb so very mild bees usually they will not bite or sting so this is the person who has started european bee culture for the first time in india so he is the person who imported the bees from the for the first time in the ludhiana so this is in brief about the bees and its by products and uh, the benefits that we are going to get what are the by products we are deriving so this is the view of a box inside so different uh, types of uh, bee boxes you can find so usually in the left picture you are seeing inside the box we find usually find eight frames so in if it is complete then only it starts preserving honey so till completion of eight frames with the offspring it will not preserve any honey so once it is filled all the eight frames are filled then only it starts keeping honey <coughs> so you can observe like here so in the left picture what you are seeing it is a brood chamber so completely it is filled so once it is filled then only it start 
keeping honey so in the middle picture on the right picture you have seen you are what you are you are seeing it is a completely capped honey in the mid picture you are seeing completely capped that is the honey is completely filled in the combs and then it is uh, sealed with wax so wax thin wax sheet it com completely covered on the cover so this is the only purest of pure honey you can rely so whatever the honey in market once it is decapped then it is not genuine honey you can call so whenever you want the genuine honey you have to observe the complete capping of this then only you can believe it as a pure honey or only with trusted beekeepers you will get pure honey so some of the pests of there are several pests natural enemies on honey bees which i am not going to touch here if anybody interested i can answer later so some of the wasps are rubber flies or dragon flies red ants they are the natural enemies on bees so they can dwindle our bee population so that we should be extra careful in maintaining our colonies by smearing either the grease or the old oil on the bottom of the stand then only we can preserve so these are the main pests of uh, european bees so bee eater and king crow they are the major bird pests on bees so some of the diseases are there they say brood disease so this is in brief i wanted to discuss i wanted to share with you people 